The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. At that time, Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him and said of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom is no guile. Nathanael said to him, How do you know me? Jesus answered him, Before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Nathanael answered him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God, you are the King of Israel. Jesus answered him, Because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree, do you believe? You shall see greater things than these. And he said to him, Truly, truly, I say to you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. wonderful feast of St. Bartholomew. Very little is known about this man, but that doesn't matter because what he did was more important than who he was. What he did was more important than what he was. We see here Jesus recognizing somebody and in his recognition saying to you are a man without guile. You are a man who is able to talk without that sense of putting somebody down. And so he has this encounter with Jesus, and Jesus says to him right at the end, you're going to see greater things than I'm mentioning now, but I saw you under the fig tree before you even knew that I was going to be calling you. So Jesus saw in Bartholomew, Nathaniel, but Bartholomew is the name we call him by now. He saw something in Nathaniel, Bartholomew, that no one else saw. What does Jesus see in us that no one else sees? What is the unique thing that Jesus saw in Bartholomew that caused him to change? And follow. And what is so significant is that it is said that Bartholomew was the first one to recognize and to declare who Jesus Christ was. He says here quite clearly, Rabbi, you are the Son of God, you are the King of Israel. Now that is a human being talking about Jesus. And when Jesus talks about himself right at the end, he talks about himself as the Son of Man. You see how the interplay is already happening in this first chapter of John, the interplay of the divine and the human in the life of Jesus and, of course, to a lesser extent, in our own lives. <clears throat> when Jesus was calling his apostles, he was a calling, he's calling forth people that would be the foundation of his church. Yes, there was a Judas. But somehow that was part of the foundation. There's a story of a family, mother and father, they had many children. And these children were well balanced, well brought up, well educated. And it was asked of the mother and father, how did you manage? And how come your children are so well balanced and in love with God and doing great things in the world? Maybe not great big things, but great important things. And they said, well, we tried to focus on our first child. 
to make that first child an example for the other children. And this is what I think Jesus was doing. Choosing the 12 to try and make them something of an example for the foundation of the church. Taking them aside, bringing them up, giving them special attention. He saw within them something special that nobody else could see. And maybe that's what we need to do in our community. We need to start identifying the beauty in each other. And seeing that every child, every parishioner, is somebody that has value. Yes, we will find people of different temperaments as Jesus found. That's a good thing, not a bad thing. But as with Nathaniel and with Nathaniel, Bartholomew, he was a person that was recognized by Jesus and he enabled himself through the love of Jesus to do great things. He apparently was, when he was martyred, apparently he went somewhere into India and then into um, Armenia. But as I say, very little is known about him, but he was skinned alive. They just tore off his skin because they didn't want him to proclaim the greatness of Jesus Christ. And after he had been skinned, he was beheaded. And here is a man who Jesus saw with great potential. What potential does he see in us that hasn't yet been realized? What potential is there in the people that we meet that we have not realized we have a duty and especially in our parish now when we are giving a very specific focus on the youth how can we as a family nurture these foundation steps these foundation stones for our future parish of Belito. I believe all we can do is do what Philip did. Come and see. Not you must do this, you have to do this, but come and see. And when they come and see in the parish, they find a place where they can encounter God. That's what we are meant to be. Like Philip, to invite people to come and see. And divine renovation is about making disciples. Well, we need to make disciples of our youth. Then let us take this very seriously and find better and more ways to fill our church with young, energetic people, your children. Let us not think we know the way we're going to do it but to invite, as we did with Philip, as we see with Philip, come and see. Let God do the miracles, but let's make our parish an inviting parish, especially for the youth. Amen.